Hello everyone, my name is Tsepo and welcome back to Native Engineering. Today we are doing an exercise on applied thermodynamics which is the steam plant, power machines and sinks. The exercise that we are doing is an exercise that I've taken from a question paper that was written on April 2019. It's question number one and it reads as follows. A steam plant consisting of an economizer, an evaporator and a superheater generates 9.5 kg of steam per kg fuel bend at a pressure of 2 megapascal. The following data was recorded about the steam plant. Calorific value of the fuel at state 1 megajoules per kg. Thermal efficiency of the plant is 82%. Temperature of the fuel gases at the chimney base is 200 degrees Celsius. Air fuel ratio at 18 is to 1. Specific heat capacity of the superheated steam 2.6 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. Temperature of the feed water entering the evaporator is 107.1 degrees Celsius. Temperature of the fuel gases leaving the evaporator is 465 degrees Celsius. Temperature of the fuel gases leaving the superheater is 300 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity of the fuel gases is 1.05 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. Temperature of the boiler room is equal to 24 degrees Celsius. And then the questions they say. Calculate the following quantities by using steam tables only. Number one, heat absorbed by the economizer in kilojoules per kg fuel. Number two, heat absorbed by the superheater in kilojoules per kg fuel. Number three, heat absorbed by the evaporator in kilojoules per kg fuel. Number four, dryness fraction of the steam entering the superheater. Number five, Temperature of the superheated steam leaving the superheater. Number six, they say, percentage of heat lost through the chimney and the percentage heat lost unaccounted for. And this is the information that we are given. We are given the pressure of the steam plant. We are given the mass of steam. We are told that it is 9.5 kg per kg of fuel that tells us that the mass of fuel that we are dealing with is one kg hence they said kg of fuel the we are given the air fuel ratio which is 18 is to one specific heat capacity of the superheated steam we are given as 2.6 kilojoules per kg kelvin we are given the thermal efficiency this is the thermal efficiency sorry it's percent 82 percent we are given the specific heat capacity of the fuel gases as 1.05 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. And we are told that the temperature of the fuel gases as they are leaving the combustion chamber is 465 degrees Celsius. Temperature of fuel gases after the superheater is 300 degrees Celsius. After the economizer is 200 degrees Celsius. We are given the temperature of the feed water after the economizer which is 107.1 degrees celsius we are given the temperature of the boiler room which is 20 degrees celsius and then question number one we are asked 1.1 to calculate for the heat absorbed at the economizer as i have mentioned on our previous video I said to get the heat that was lost or gained in the evaporator you are going to use H1 and H2 and if you do not have H1 or H2 just like in this case we do not have H1 you will use the information of the fuel gases if you are have you if you are given and in this case that is what we have we are going to say the Q or heat energy in the economizer it's equals to the mass of the fuel gases times the specific heat capacity of the fuel gases times the change in temperature of the fuel gases. Mass of the fuel gases is equals to 1 
9 which will be 18 plus 1 according to the FUL ratio that we have we know that the FUL ratio tells us that for every 1 kg of fuel that we are using at the combustion chamber we will also let in 18 kgs of air into the fuel chamber so now the mass of the fuel gases is the sum of those two which is what is found in the combustion chamber that is why the mass of the fuel gases is 18 plus 1 and the specific capacity is 1.5 Zero 05 which is what we are given the temperature change in temperature since we are looking for the heat that is gained or lost at the economizer in this ball it's it's lost by the fuel gases will be 300 minus 200 300 minus 200 which will give us our answer is 1995 kilojoules and then they said we must get the answer in kilojoules per kg fuel we'll say per kg fuel this is to show that we are using one kg of fuel and then we go to question number two which is 1.2 they say heat absorbed by the superheater in kilojoules per kg we're going to do the same thing heat absorbed at the superheater it's equals to mass of fuel gases times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. Mass at 19. Specific heat capacity it's 1.05 times the change in temperature. It's 465 minus 300, which will give us 3,291. 0.75 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and then we go to question number three I will need this space erase this question number three 1.3 they say heat absorbed by the evaporator in kilojoules per kg of fuel in this case we will use the thermal efficiency to get the heat that is absorbed at the evaporator we know thermal efficiency is given by the heat transferred to steam divided by the heat or let's just say cv times mass which let's say it's heat value which is the heat total heat energy that is produced is produced by the fuel the heat that the heat that is found or the heat that is transferred to the steam it's equals to first the heat that is transferred at the economizer plus the heat that is transferred at the evaporator plus the heat that is transferred at the superheater this is hv times mass Let's erase all of this. substitute the heat energy that is transferred at the economizer that we calculated and we got that it's 1995 that was the first question the heat energy that is found at the evaporator that's what we are looking for the heat energy that is transferred at the superheater that was what we got in question number two and we got that it is three two nine one point seven five now this will be times 100 steam times 100 and here say q soup times 100 and then even here will be times 100 heat value we are given our heat value is that one 
megajoules. I've converted it to be in kilojoules, which will be 31000. And the mass of fuel, we already know it's 1. The thermal efficiency is 82. And we, subject, we solve for this equation since this, what we are looking for, it's the only unknown in this equation. And we get it as 2013.25 kilojoules per kg of fuel. Since we are using 1 kg of fuel. And then we go to question number four. They say, dryness fraction of uh, the steam entering the superheater. Let's erase this. That's 1.4. They need the dryness fraction of the wet steam that is entering uh, the evaporator. The wet steam, the enthalpy of the wet steam is H3. And we know it is given by HF plus the dryness fraction times HFG. This is where we can get our dryness fraction. <coughs> These ones we can easily extract from the steam table since we have the pressure. We first need to get H3. We know H3 will be equal to H2 plus h2 is this one plus the heat energy that was added at the evaporator because h2 plus the heat energy that was added at the evaporator is the F, will be the enthalpy of the steam after the evaporator and this is the heat that was added at the evaporator which is what we calculated in question number three so we are going to say Q evaporator. Our H2, we know H2, it's equals to HF at the temperature, which is 107.1 kilojoules. Oh, sorry, it's degree Celsius, degree Celsius. This we extract from the steam table is 449. 449. Yes, and we know that the heat, the enthalpy that we extract from the steam table will be 449 kilojoules per kg of steam. But we are dealing with 9.5 of steam, so we will have to convert it or we'll have to times by 9.5, which will give us the actual enthalpy of the steam before the evaporator. And then we will say plus the heat energy that was added at the evaporator, which will be 20133.25. And this will give us our H3 as 24398.74 kilojoules per kg of fuel. And we are taking this to this equation. We will substitute and say 24398.75. It's equals to HF using this pressure. I got that it is 908 plus the dryness fraction times, say, 1889. Again, we know this and this since we have extracted from the steam table. They are enthalpy or they are specific enthalpy, which will be kg kilojoules per kg of steam. Here we are dealing with 1.5 kg of steam, therefore, we are going to say times 9.5. We have to convert this one and this one. And I got that the dryness fraction, since this is the only thing that we don't have the only unknown in the equation we calculate and get that it is 0 0.879 that's it
that is the dryness fraction of uh, the steam. And then we go to question number five. They say temperature of the superheated steam leaving the superheater. So 1.5. Here we'll say H4, since we know H4 is the enthalpy of superheated steam. Superheated steam is given by Hg plus specific heat capacity of the superheated steam in bracket T soup, which is what we're looking for, minus Ts, which is the saturation temperature. First, we have to get H4. H4 is equals to H3 plus the heat energy that was added at the superheater H sup. H3 we calculated in the previous question and we got that it is 2,4,3,9,8,7,5 plus the heat energy that is added at the superheater it's 1,3,9,8,7,5 it's 3291.75 which will give us our H4 as 27690.5 using this equation we are going to substitute this it will be 4 with 27690.5 this we get from the steam table it is 2797 plus the specific capacity of the superheated steam we are given is 2.6 saturation t soup this is what we are looking for minus the saturation temperature from the steam table it is one is 212.4 and we will say times 9.5 actually this we were we, we are dividing here to convert this to be in a specific enthalpy so that it will match with this one or we can just times it at this other end to make things simple and we get that our t soup it's equals to 205 257.683 degrees Celsius. And then we do the last question where they say percentage of heat lost through the chimney and the percentage heat lost unaccounted for. Let's erase this 1.6. They say they want the percentage of heat lost through the chimney. We are going to say the mass of the fuel gases uh, times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. The fuel gases currently they are at 200 degrees Celsius. They are released to the atmosphere and now they are at 20 degrees Celsius because in fact, this is not 20, it's 24. They are at 24 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature at the boiler room. As they are leaving the plant, there is no way they can sustain the 200 degrees Celsius at an environment that is 24 degrees Celsius. So they will lose its heat up until they are 24 degrees Celsius. And we want the heat that was lost through this transition from 200 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius. We are going to say the mass of fuel gases, which is 19, times 1.05, which is the specific heat capacity. And then we say the, the change in temperature is 200 minus 24, which will give us. 3511.2 and then now we want to find out in percentage how much this is 
from the total heat that was produced by the coal and we say times 100 and we get that it is 11.326 percent and then they say and the percentage heat loss unaccounted for we are going to say from the 100 percent degrees from the 100 percent that was produced by the coal 82 percent is what was used according to the thermal efficiency that they gave us is what was used to, to transform or to evaporate the feed water from what it was to becoming superheated steam and we know that 11.326 percent was lost through the chimney what is it that we are left with we are left with six point six seven four percent which is the losses that uh they say it's unaccounted for and this is how we go about answering this question i will see you on the next lesson